uh, solid gains for the markets. We have the Bank Nifty, which is up uh, four odd percent at this point in time. We have the advanced decline ratio, which is standing at around 2,570 st six stocks advancing to just a little over 1,400 stocks which are declining. So it gives you an advanced decline ratio of around 2 is to 1 nearly on the Bombay Stock Exchange. As you can see, the gap is nice and wide and has been through the trading session. Around 300 stocks today in upper circuit as per the BSC. But let's talk about one specific stock now. Indigene is one particular stock that we're tracking. Q4 was the first quarter that the company reported since listing for them and they have posted a decent performance. Growth uh, was in single digits, but there was operational improvement year on year and strong profit growth. Suhas Prabhu is the CFO of Indigene now joins in to discuss the numbers. Mr. Prabhu, thank you very much for uh, joining in. You know, it's the first quarter since listing. You grew around 6.5% this quarter. But if you compare it to, say, nine months where you were up around 15% or for the full year, you were up around 12% the growth has come down in relative terms. Uh, why is that? Yeah, so I would, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on your show today. Um, so I would uh, want you to also look at uh, some of our segmental uh, results while looking at uh, the growth. So when you look at uh, the enterprise uh, business of ours, consisting of both enterprise uh, commercial and enterprise uh, medical, uh, this is a business that has uh, grown 11% uh, year on year. And uh, this is the uh, business which caters largely to our uh, uh, large customers, the top uh, 20, top 50 global uh, pharmaceutical uh, companies. And um, while uh, the industry had certain uh, challenges during the year, the revenue growth was uh, 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 marginally negative. Right. Even in that environment, we have grown this business at around uh, 11%. Coming to the other segments, we had a slightly higher exposure to uh, emerging uh, biotech uh, segment in the rest of the uh, segments. And as you would have seen in our uh, 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 segmental uh, disclosures, the emerging biotech business has had some uh, challenges uh, globally. And that has also reflected in uh, a negative growth uh, of the emerging market, uh, emerging biotech uh, business for Indigene. And uh, the, uh, the revenue contribution has come down from 4.1% to 2.7%. Um, so as a blend, there has been a bit of a, a, a challenge on the top line uh, growth in absolute uh, terms, but we remain positive given that the, uh, we have seen a strong growth in the core business, which is the enterprise business and uh, the larger uh, biopharma segment that we uh, serves. Right, we take that point. Uh, so I just wanted your thoughts on uh, two things. One is that, uh, you know, what was the addition of new clients in this quarter and what's the outlook on that for the next uh, year? And your margins, they've improved from what, 17% to 19%. What's a sustainable number for FY25? Sure. So, uh, the uh, as you rightly pointed out, the margins have uh, grown significantly at a EBITDA level, including other income. We have actually crossed 24% for the um, uh, quarter four. And uh, this has grown steadily from um, 18% uh, uh, or from about, uh, you know, two years ago uh, to um, the 24% uh, plus in the current uh, uh, quarter. And uh, it is a blend of a couple of uh, things. Um, you know, our um, technology uh, uh, investments have, which have matured over the period, have uh, shown significant uh, uh, impact on efficiency and productivity metrics uh, within the organization. And uh, this plays out positively in terms of the overall um, margin. Um, even uh, things that we have uh, done in terms of uh, the workforce planning, uh, you know, uh, the uh, quantum of uh, campus recruitments that we have done, which has shown an increase year or uh, year, uh, has also positively uh, impacted. And therefore, we remain uh, positive on uh, the margin um, expansion, and we will strive to maintain and uh, grow from uh, here on. All right. Uh, so you'll maintain and grow from uh, current levels. Uh what about uh, repayment of debt? I remember, you know, when we spoke during uh, the IPO opening of the 760 crore that you were raising via fresh issue, you said that you will deploy it in completely being debt-free. So by when does that start reflecting in 
lower finance costs and what could the annual savings to that extent be? Yes, um, you mentioned right, we had spoken about this uh, during the IPO uh, process. Um, so uh, almost 400 crores, 391 crores uh, at the exchange rates prevailing uh, then um, is going towards repayment of the uh, debt of uh, $47.2 million on the books of our US subsidiary. We have initiated the process of uh, uh, investing from the parent to the US subsidiary, which will in turn result um, in the repayment of this uh, loan and uh, being uh, debt free. Uh, it's just a matter of a, a few days to a couple of weeks uh, for completion of this uh, process. And uh, therefore, uh, the positive impact of this on the margins should be seen in our quarter two uh, results, maybe very marginally in our quarter one uh, uh, results, given that it would be sometime um, in the early part of uh, June to mid-June that we would um, see us becoming a debt-free company and the interest servicing cost uh, going down to zero thereafter. Well, you did have some uh, recent acquisitions as well. Uh, can you just give us a sense in terms of whether Trilogy was uh, incorporated into this quarter's numbers? Uh, it, Trilogy was an acquisition in the medical writing uh, space. Trilogy is a Europe headquartered uh, business, uh, but it's a small niche uh, business uh, uh, that we have acquired towards the end of uh, March of uh, 24, more precisely on 22nd of March uh, 24. And um, therefore, our results as of uh, uh, March 31st do not uh, include the revenue and the margins of uh, this uh, transaction as this was a non-material uh, acquisition which happened towards the end of uh, uh, this uh, period. The balance sheet, of course, reflects the uh, assets that were purchased as part of this uh, transaction. Um, also, I would like to highlight that uh, uh, you know, this is not a financial bulk up. It's a, as I mentioned, a very small um, transaction, less than uh, even five percent of uh, the size of Indigene, and therefore uh, would not have a material impact both on the uh, revenue or uh, bottom line uh, on a go forward basis. Also, all right. Uh, just give us a sense in terms of the U.S. as well as Europe geography wise. How did you perform? And what were the kind of contracts that you all managed to acquire or say companies uh, that you managed to acquire this quarter uh, in terms of new business? And what can we expect in you know, going into FY25? Sure. Um, so our uh, business um, still uh, uh, remains heavily uh, skewed towards US and uh, Europe, given that the global life science uh, operational spends uh, are also, uh, you know, in these two uh, uh, geographies or regions. Uh, so 97% of our business, and this has remained fairly stable in that 95 to 97% over the last three years as well, um, comes uh, out of uh, contracts and customers that are headquartered in US and um, Europe. So there's been no significant change um, in that uh, geographical uh, split. Coming to the uh, customer uh, split itself, we had about $34 million plus uh, customers on our roster. And uh, as of uh, March 24, we have uh, $35 million plus uh, customers on our uh, roster today. And uh, this is uh, what we would focus on growing customers who are million dollar plus into that 5 million, 10 million uh, bucket, growing the $10 million customers uh, you know, further uh, up into the 20, 25 million dollar bucket and uh, the 25 million um, dollar plus uh, customer further uh, north of uh, that. So if I so, look at uh, the last uh, year, uh, you know, our largest uh, customer for March right. 24 uh, exceeded 42 million dollars uh, in total revenue. All right, just a word before we let you go. So, Has, you've spoken about margin improvement uh, from current levels. What's the overall revenue guidance that you have for this year? 12% is what you grew FY24 at. Yes, so uh, while I'll uh, refrain from giving any forward-looking uh, guidance, uh, what I'd like to highlight is that the industry last year, and more specifically the top 35 uh, biopharma from where we derive significant portion of our revenues, um, de-grew in uh, revenues last year. Um, the outlook for the current year is that 
um, you know, the direction is changing, right? Um, and therefore, they are likely to uh, register a positive growth. And that bodes well for uh, us and uh, their spends uh, in these kind of operational areas as well. And therefore, we remain uh, positive uh, for the future, not just uh, on margin improvements, but also on uh, our revenue growth. Okay, all right. Uh, we're going to let you go on that note. Uh, thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's Indigene. That stock is up around 2 odd percent at this point in time. Well, remember that the issue price for this particular stock was around uh, 452 when it listed um, in the second week of May. And it did see a strong uh, listing as well of around 40 odd percent uh, from its issue price. Uh, we need to take a short break, but Jay Thakkar will join in to discuss some technical calls. Stay tuned.